Good morning, YouTube, and happy Thursday. I don't have a lot of time to talk this morning because I actually have to make a quick video for my CP Chem class. We are talking about light, and we're talking about light behaving as a wave and a particle. So we're doing some calculations, so I need to quickly make a video to show the students how to solve these problems, just give them some scaffolding, and then I'll talk a little bit about what team activities I'm doing today. A team activity is really just a pogle, but um, I don't call them pogles. I notice that there's usually a stigma associated with some uh, pedagogical terminology, so I tend to kind of stay away from that. So instead, I call it a team activity. So I'm going to make that video really quick, and then I'll check in with you guys momentarily. You're going to solve this problem in three parts. We're going to do the setup, we're going to do substitution, and then the solution. I thought it would be important to talk a little bit about how I am incorporating group work into my classes this year. Keep in mind, I am in a hybrid environment. So I have students that are in front of me in the classroom, and then I also have students that are at home. The number one way that I would incorporate group work into my classes would be using team activities. And again, as I mentioned earlier today, a team activity is really a POGL. POGL stands for Process Oriented Guided Inquiry Learning. I absolutely love POGL. It's a great way for your students to learn science by doing science. They're making sense of the information, they're grappling with the content, and best of all, they're working with their peers and collaborating. And so I absolutely love the fact that my students can work together to learn the information and come to me with questions. It makes me definitely feel more like a guide on the side instead of the sage on the stage, which I do enjoy because it's really not all about me. It's the student's classroom. It belongs to them. But obviously, in the hybrid environment, this may not be so easy, especially if your students are not synchronous. Whenever I decide that I want to do a POGL with my students, what I will do is take the POGL document, which they all come as PDFs. So the book that I have, I actually have two. I have the one that's for like the general chemistry, and then I have another one that's specific to AP chemistry. But what I'll do is I'll take the activities, which come as a PDF, and then I'll take them and then import them into Google Docs. Now, when you do that, you can't use the PDF. So what I tend to do is I'll go from the PDF to a um, merger, I guess, that converts the PDF into a Word file. And then once you have the Word file, you can convert it into a Google Doc. My students have told me that they prefer to use Google Docs so that they can type the information as opposed to writing on it in a PDF like with Kami or DocHub. So I just want to do whatever makes my students' lives easier. So that's how I tend to convert it so that it makes it easier so that everybody can access it. The other thing that I did for my students this year was to set up breakout rooms. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know I recently posted a little bit about breakout rooms. So what I do for breakout rooms is I set up six individual Google Meets and I post these links onto a Google slide. For me, it's my Bitmoji. The students can click on the Bitmoji and it'll take them to their respective breakout room. I assign groups. Um, I don't have the students pick their groups. I always worry that students are gonna get left out. So I always tend to just make sure that I do it. And that way I can make sure too, there's like three or four students to a learning team. And so at the start of our poll goal, the students can click on their breakout room and start working together on it. I also like having the links to the breakout room because that allows me to go into the breakout room whenever I see fit, especially if I see that the students are not on the right track. Another thing that I did in order to model the expectations for student behavior when they're in the breakout rooms, especially during team activities, is I had the students complete a team activity with me as an entire class. Yes, I had all 25 students logged on to one Google Doc in our Google Meet, and what we were doing was answering the questions as a class. And so by doing so, you, the students automatically saw that by somebody reading the question out loud, really helps students for comprehension, helps everybody keep on the same page. I also found that students were like, okay, so I can't skip ahead, I can't divide and conquer, I need to make sure that I answer every question before I go on to the next question. Unfortunately, nobody has really said anything or complained like, hey, this student's not doing the work. Or So it's really been a very positive experience. The students have been doing a great job in their breakout rooms. Another strategy that was really helpful for me was teaching my students how to add me to their Google Meet. So let's say they get to a question and they're like, I have no idea what to do. That's when they can reach out to me. So I taught my students how to add me to their Google Meet and I keep an eye on my email throughout the entire class period so that if I see a Google Meet invitation, I can just hop right into their Google Meet and that lets me know that they need help. Another thing that I do that I found incredibly helpful is I only assign the learning 
learning team activity to one member of the learning team. So that person is the team manager. In Google Classroom, I'll go in, I'll assign it to only six students out of the 24 students, for example, that I have in class. And then it is the responsibility of the team manager to share that document with everybody in their learning team as editors. To help make sure that the students are on the right track, one of the things that I love about Google Classroom is I can go through and I can see what the students are doing and if they're answering the questions appropriately, if they're stuck, you know, if I see the cursor blinking and nobody's typing anything, that usually tells me like, okay, I should probably go in there and see how it's going. I use the comment feature in Google Classroom a lot to help the students and scaffold them and ask them questions about what they've written down. And ultimately, that helps kind of get the conversation going so that if they are struggling, they can say, hey, Miss R, I don't really know what's going on. Can you help me? So those are five ways that I've really kind of morphed my Pogel um, classroom into a more virtual, friendly Pogel classroom. It's working pretty well. As I mentioned though, I don't have defined specific roles and I'm not sure if that's necessarily something that I need just yet, especially because I already modeled the expectation by completing the team activity as an entire class. But as always, there is of course room for improvement. So I'm gonna just continue to listen to my students you know, maybe I'll survey them next week, see how it went, and then we'll go from there. One final thing that I have done to help scaffold for my students is exactly what I was talking about earlier with my CP class. What I do is I'll create an ed puzzle that reviews some of the important aspects of the team activity, especially in light of what's going on and some students being hybrid and some students being virtual. They need to be able to easily access the information. And especially if we've run out of time, I wanna make sure that students can still get the information that they need. That way on the next class, I'm not kind of reviewing everything. We're able to just move on to the next thing. I hope you had a wonderful week with your students. For me, it was very, very busy. Um, I didn't do a lab this week. Um, probably next week I'll do some sort of molar volume lab with my AP kids. But for right now, I am going to get out of here because I, I do have a couple more things to do for the AP class. I actually have to record that scaffolding video for the AP students because they will be doing their team activity tomorrow. But as always, I welcome your comments and suggestions. If there's anything that you'd like me to talk about on my channel and what I'm doing with my students, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I wish you a wonderful weekend and I'll be sure to check in with you next week.